is being recorded. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second webinar of the fourth IBM Digital Nation Africa webinar series. Uh, my colleague Hashem Noor will present today the Build Your Car Auction application using blockchain a webinar on the topic of blockchain. Um, if you have any questions, please address uh, us in the chat. I see that uh, we already have one from uh, Lamy, which uh, we will respond to uh, shortly, to which Hashem will respond shortly. And uh, I guess uh, we already have enough uh, people. Uh, and in that case, uh, Hashem, the floor is yours. You can present. Thank you, Gurman. So hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. And thank you all for joining this webinar. In today's webinar, I'll be in, in, introducing you to the concept and the application of blockchains. And we'll be taking you through a, a wireframe of, uh, of a demo of how you can create your block, car auction application blockchain so but however before i start I, I want to emphasize on the fact that if at any point during the webinar you have any questions or any queries please feel free to ask in this webinar specifically we'll be addressing some technical terms surrounding blockchain so and if you and if you have any questions uh, about them please uh, feel free to ask them through the webex chat all right so let's get started I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Hashim Noor, and I am a content and application developer. And working at IBM for the past two years, my areas of interest are AI, blockchain, and APIs and microservices. Before I start the webinar, I want to all, I want you all to know that we have an exciting mobile app for our IBM Digital Nation platform. Now, with this app, you can earn digital skills. You can earn IBM Digital badges on the go. And the mobile app has all the Explorer courses along with the design thinking courses. We are constantly updating the app with and features. You can go ahead and download the mobile app by clicking on the link that my colleague German will send on the chat. So go ahead, download the mobile app and browse through it. And uh, you, can, uh, you can stay connected uh, through our courses and through our uh, badges while on the go. <laughs> all right so with that being said uh i want to tell you all a little bit about the ibm digital nation africa platform the ibm digital nation africa platform is a learning and innovate innovation platform which offers the four main features that you can see on your screen these four main features are learn earn badges innovate and find jobs on our platform we offer a variety of courses which help you learn and apply the latest emerging technologies such as cloud, AI, data science, and so on. But we do not just stop at the theoretical learning. We have also have a wide range of project-based hands-on courses which will enable you to start building innovative solutions using the latest emerging technology. On top of that, upon successful completion of every course, you will a digital badge, which is a verified proof of your achievement and learning. These digital badges can be shared on social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and are highly valued in the IT industry. And last but not the least, you can look for jobs using the Digital Nation Africa platform. Our job advisor tool, which is powered by IBM Watson, will help you search for a job which is most suited to you according to your skill set. It can also help you perform a skill gap analysis and tell you which courses you need to take in order to further develop your job and make yourself more employable in the job market. Now, with that being said, let me actually take you and show you how the platform looks like. So this is the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform. As you can see, these are the four main, uh, three main journeys that I talked about, Explorer, Innovator, and New Caller. The Explorer learning journey provides a series of short video-based courses, quick to learn, and, and these courses introduce, to, introduce the users to key emerging technologies and also includes examples on, on how these technologies are being used. The innovator section here, it allows users to create their own digital solution. It starts with inspiring the user by, show, uh, by showing them many examples of uh, digital solutions that uh, can be created. It provides uh, an introduction to design thinking and uh, 
and then uh, and then uh, the users are on to uh, can also take uh, project based use case driven courses which they can use to leverage the <clears throat> which they can leverage to build their own innovative solution lastly the new caller section is designed to offer users the ability to gain key digital skills which are in high demand in the workplace <clears throat> and are in line with the job roles such as web application developer cloud developer ai analyst and so on this so section also features our job advisor tool which helps you find jobs and performs uh, the skill gap analysis and based on which it can advise you on the available courses on the platform that you can add to your learning journey and uh, lastly the website which you can refer to and ask any questions that you may have regarding any courses or uh, any other help that you may need. With that being said, let me go back to my presentation and explain to you guys what blockchain is. However, before we start talking about blockchain, I want to tell you guys a little bit about what a ledger is. And uh, and how transactions and the exchange of goods is documented. So what is blockchain? Blockchain is a distributed ledger technology where the ledger is shared amongst all the entities in the network. <coughs> blockchain offers all parties involved in the business network a secure and synchronized record of the blockchain. The blockchain ledger records every sequence of transactions from beginning to the end. Whether it is hundreds of steps in a in a supply chain or a single online payment, as each transaction occurs, it is put into a block. Each block is connected to the one before and after, and groups of these transactions are blocked together, and a fingerprint of each block is added to the next, thus creating an irreversible chain. This, as a result, provides us with a record of transactions which is secure, transparent, and effective. Now. Uh, later on in the presentation, I will show you a diagram uh, how the blockchain looks like. So bear with me here because I know it can be a little bit much to take in, but uh, we're getting there. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, show you a diagram of what the blockchain looks like, which will hopefully uh, make it simple for you guys to understand. All right, so we spoke about the ledger, and I want to tell you guys what the ledger is. So ledger, as you can see in the picture, is a document or a record keeping mechanism which is used to keep a transaction of all business actions. Ledgers, for example, can be used for effectively recording the flow of assets in and out of an organization. And uh, this ledger is updated every time a transaction occurs. So for example, let's say if I run a business where I'm buying and selling cars, Every time I sell a car, I will record that uh, in my ledger. I will document in the ledger all details such as uh, <clears throat> such as uh, which car I sold, who I sold it to, how much I sold it for, and when did I sell it. And not just that, all the other parties involved in the transaction, such as the person buying the car, they will also have to update their own ledger at their end. You know, And if there is some other entity involved in the process, such as a bank, they will also need to have uh, an updated ledger and as i mentioned all these kind of updates are done every uh, every time by every party and it's a little bit redundant right so this is how ledgers are used and i'm sure that you must be able to tell by now that there are quite a few problems with this approach so this picture shows you a high level overview of how business things take place in the when you're not using blockchain, when you're using the uh, the ledger, as we spoke about, <clears throat> as you can see, every party involved needs to maintain a ledger at their end. <clears throat> These ledgers are shown in the picture with different colors, as you can see. <coughs> Excuse me. And every time a transaction occurs, a transaction takes place, all parties involved in the transaction need to update their ledger but for example if party a buys a car from party b all the entities involved will record this transaction in their ledger the same transaction will be recorded by party a party b the bank the insurance company and the regulator the regular the regulatory authorities such as the government entities and so on and so forth 
And this approach has a lot of issues. Number one, the system is inefficient because as you can see, the same transaction is recorded by every entity involved. This is redundant and time consuming. And plus, if a mistake is made, it is very difficult to trace it. Because of all these redundant and time consuming tasks, this process is also expensive. <clears throat> and uh, it's also prone to errors and fraud, such uh, because there are so many parties involved. So, how does blockchain come into the picture and help us <clears throat> simplify the entire process? <coughs> so, this is what the business network looks look like when the blockchain is leveraged. Instead of every party maintaining a separate ledger at their end, shared ledger amongst all the participants. This makes the process of recording transactions in a business network a lot more effective. This makes the process, <clears throat> the key features of blockchain network are as follows. Consensus, first of all, which means that we we determine who within the blockchain net network gets to validate or approve a transaction which is encoded into the blockchain. Number second, provenance, which is effectively an order trail, a complete record of who who's owned an asset throughout its lifetime, and this is all recorded on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And last but not the least, immut immutability. <coughs> which means that it is impossible to tamper with the blocks once it's actually been written. As a result of this, we have a system where we can trace each and every transaction from end to end. Thus, no need to set up inter saving a lot of costs. And the system is secure and thus it can be trusted and relied upon and so on. And all of this provides a big boost to the business. And with that, I hope you all have a grasp on, on, on what blockchain is and why it is effective. So let's now take a look at the major components of how it make up a blockchain network. <coughs> so this diagram shows a high level view of how blockchain how a blockchain network works. And this is what I was talking about earlier in the presentation. All these different blocks are joined together with each other and uh, a single, <clears throat> a, single uh, a fingerprint of the, the block after and, uh, and the one before is added to every block which uh, provides a uh, which makes an ill and uh, the network therefore cannot be tampered with all right so these are the four main components of blockchain number one the shared ledger In the shared ledger we spoke about this this is the most essential feature of the blockchain. It records all the transactions across shared with all the participants. Number two, the smart contract. The smart contract defines the rules that govern every blockchain transaction. This provides rules like uh, which participant on the network has permission to do which action and has access to what kind of resources. Number three, the assets which is the good or the commodity which is being recorded on the ledger. Number four, the participants. The participants refer to all the different entities. What are the main components that a blockchain is comprised of? We take a look into these components in a great detail in coming slides. And with that being said, I want to Take you through the steps that you can follow in order to build your own blockchain network. So, in order to set up your blockchain network, 
first of all you need you need to set up the hyperledger composer number two you need to set up the business network archive you need to add the participants the assets and then you can conduct the auction these are the steps that you need to follow if you want to build a car auction application using blockchain all right so <coughs> let me walk you through each of these steps and what they will look like when you're doing what it will look like when you are doing them on your own once i share the link with you where to the website where you'll be able to go and uh, do these steps on your own so the screenshot that you can see on the screen is of the hyperledger composer playground and this is the website that you'll be using in order to build your own blockchain network so the first step is to set up the business network archive and uh, <coughs> to do that you'll actually need to download a file and you can download this file from the link that my colleague will share in the chat now so you can download this file from the chat and you can uh, drag a, you can click on the uh, the upload button here and you can drag uh, and you can upload the business network archive once the archive has been uploaded you'll be able to see something like this on the screen and this is uh, and this will mean that the blockchain network has been set up and uh, once the network has been set up then you you'll be able to you'll be able to go ahead and use the network and conduct the sort of car auction on the blockchain network and in order to do that you have to click on the test tab now the first step that we'll do is we'll add participants these are the people who will be conducting the transactions transactions by, by transactions i mean the buying and the selling of the cars so you'll click on the test tab and then after that you'll click on create new participant <clears throat> and once you click on the create new participant button a window will pop up where you'll be able to add the details of your participant in this in this uh, in this window as you can see the participant that we are adding her name is Alice, and this is her email address. Her name is Alice Smith, and this is her email address. And this person has a balance of $1,000. Once you click on update, this participant will be added. And in our example, let's say we add three participants. Their names are Alice, Bob, and Charlie. Once all the three added, this is how it will display on your screen. Once that's done, once you have added the participants, then you need to add the assets. And the asset is the, in this example, is the vehicle that is being, uh, <coughs> that is being auctioned. In order to do that, you'll click on the vehicle tab and you'll click on create, a, create new asset. Once you click on this button, the, this pop-up, Will show up where you're able to enter the details of the vehicle that you want to auction off. And over over there and in, in uh, on this pop-up, you can enter the VIN number, which is the vehicle identification number. And you can and over here, as you can see, you will be able to enter the email address of the person who owns this vehicle. Once you cl click on create new this vehicle will be added to the network now the last step <coughs> is for the participants to bid on the vehicle and the one with the highest bid will will get the vehicle now remember the vehicle belongs to charlie currently and as we go on once the auction is complete this will change right so in order to conduct the auction, we'll first click on submit transaction. And we'll click on the offer. Now, what we are doing in this step is the, the participants in the network, the participants who are participating in the auction will be bidding on the vehicle. Right? So you'll click on offer and 
once you click on offer you'll be able to add the details of the <coughs> uh, the details of the vehicle that you're bidding on and the bid price what is your bid price you'll be able to add that and who is uh, who is the one who is the person bidding so in this example one of our participants alice is placing a bid on the card once you place the bid it will it will appear on the network like this and as you can see currently there are two offers on the on the vehicle right now and uh, <coughs> and the blockchain network in the background will uh, will be able to will be able to calculate which which uh, which offer which bidding offer is higher and uh, once you close the bid the the vehicle will be transferred to the to that person so as i showed you in our example the the member with the email address alice had the highest number bid and uh, therefore the vehicle has been transferred to her right so as uh, this is the vehicle as you can see this this was the identification number one two three four and it belonged to charlie if you guys recall at the start and now after the bidding it has transferred to alice and uh, her balance has also decreased her initial starting balance was ten thousand it has decreased to four thousand because she placed a bid of six thousand dollars and uh, charlie's balance he was the one selling the vehicle and his initial balance was 100 and it's increased by six thousand so six thousand one hundred <coughs> and basically this is how the I mean, this is how the blockchain functions and throughout this entire process no other third party can inter interfere and intervene and all of these participants can view the entire list of transactions at their own end without there being any interference so no one can change any transaction no one can do sort of a corruption from their own end so this is in this uh, what i just showed you was the how you can create a car auction application this auction is this application is built upon the hyperledger composer right i'll share with you the link through which you can access the hyperledger composer and uh, then you'll be able to build your car auction application uh, through the through the screenshots by following the steps that i mentioned in the screenshot you'll be able to build that on top of the hyperledger composer and then if you guys want you can create your own customized front end and add it with that right so that is uh, that's all for uh, the presentation i want to before i conclude i want to go over the advantages of using blockchain <clears throat> and uh, first of all the advantage is that there is integrity there is fairness you know every person is uh, allowed only one vote i mean uh, uh, like they can uh, bid at any one vehicle uh, there is no sort of uh, no no person can uh, do the bidding on someone else's behalf and so on and so forth so these are the advantages of using blockchain for conducting business <clears throat> uh, if you want to continue learning about blockchain we have a detailed learning track on the ibm digital nation africa portal <coughs> starts off with the introductory blockchain course moves on to the innovator courses and we have the new color courses as well and a complete learning track of eight courses and almost 20 hours worth of learning and after completing every course you will also get a digital badge which you can then share on your social networks all right so that's it for today's uh, webinar if you have any questions please feel free to ask All right. My colleague German will be reading out the questions so that I can answer them.
Uh, all right. Thank you, Hashim. Um, we actually have uh, two uh, unaddressed uh, questions so far. Um, one is uh, from uh, Lame. It was sent during uh, the very beginning of the webinar. Uh, it says, hi, I would like uh, to thank you first and all the staff too. My question is uh, why some countries think that the blockchain is really dangerous and all who are using it are criminal. For example, countries uh, in uh, North Africa. Um, so Hashem, can you please uh, discuss the uh, safety and applications of blockchain in to, uh, uh, in those uh, terms? All right. So that's an excellent question, and uh, I want to answer that. I uh, the the person mentioned that mostly the people using blockchain are criminals. Well, it's uh, I believe you know. Uh, blockchain is often confused with Bitcoin because uh, Bitcoin is one of the uh, applications of blockchain, and uh, that is often and Bitcoin is often used by uh, by uh, for illegitimate purposes as well, and that's why people often confuse that you know blockchain in itself is being used for purposes, but there's nothing like that, and. Uh, the thing is that uh, one of the one of the reasons why people also consider that blockchain is being used for criminal activities is because blockchain uh, <clears throat> the blockchain uh, ensures anonymity anonymity of the transaction. So, for example, if a business transaction is taking place, only the people involved in that transactions are able to, and the regulatory authorities obviously are able to see what's going on within the network outside influence so this anonymity is often uh, confused and it's uh, people think that you know there is something illegal going on behind the scenes while it is nothing like that i hope that answers your question okay um uh, i believe there is another question the person's asking what if the buyer has two different feelings <coughs> can they bid twice so, um, if the in this example, the the email address is the unique identifier for each person. So, by by using two different emails, it will technically mean in this example. I'm not referring to blockchain in general. I'm just referring to this example because this is a very many miniature example of of what a blockchain network and how it functions. So, in this example, so using the email address as the Identifier between different uh, different entities. If two people are, if the same people are, if the same person is using two different emails, yes, they will be able to bid on the same vehicle twice, and that's because you know the system will see it as a different person. However, if we expand this, you know, to let's say <clears throat> if this application is expanded to a larger scale. Where, uh, where you know, where you're using, for example, uh, not email as an identifier, but let's say a unique identification number and so on and so forth, then you will not be able to, you know, do the transaction stores because uh, you know a unique identification number will one person will only have one unique identifier identification number. So, hope that answers your question. Any other questions, Greg? All right, we have uh, several questions uh, about the use of uh, IBM uh, uh, Cloud with the blockchain services. So uh, one is about building a uh, platform on IBM Cloud. Another one is about IBM Blockchain Cloud Services. If you can talk briefly about it. So yeah, IBM has So as I was saying, IBM Cloud has a lot of services and it covers different technologies. On IBM Cloud there are 
uh, artificial intelligence services, data science service. And we have a blockchain service as well, which you can use to create uh, blockchain applications. So, what is, is if there is anything specifically, uh, if there is any specific thing that you want to know about the IBM blockchain platform? Yeah, the IBM, uh, the IBM, uh, the the service, the blockchain service on IBM Cloud is it's called the IBM Blockchain Platform. And you can use it to build uh, blockchain applications. <coughs> All right. So we have we have a follow-up question. The, and the person is saying it's not watertight. Then. Well, it is watertight. But like I said, this example, uh, in this example, we are using email as a unique identifier, just to simplify it. So let's say if I were to use Let's say if I were to use a, if I were to make make sure that people use their national identity numbers or let's say their passport numbers for uh, in order to register their bid, then it will be a uh, then it will be a water type system because two people can one person cannot have two different passports. So you know, in in this example, it's just this example in which we, that we are using uh, the email for uh, as a unique identifier. So that's why it appears that it's not a watertight action. <coughs> but uh, in reality, if you were to apply this system at a government level, for example, you'd obviously not be using an email. Two different between different participants would be using their government ID. Passport number or something like that. All right, we have, so I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, we have another question. I'm sorry I came in late. Is it possible to get the full recording? Of course, my colleague German will share the full recording of the presentation, the slides as well, and you can go through this presentation on your own. <laughs> and you can go through the recordings. We have, we did a couple of other webinars. I covered blockchain in uh, different uh, webinars as well, and uh, we'll share you the link for those webinars as well. And you can uh, go through the recordings of all the webinars that we have done up till now. <clears throat> all right. So we have a question from Hamad. Uh, how can I benefit from blockchain in day-to-day -day life? I need an example. So. Um, in day-to-day -day life, for example, let's say you're buying vegetables at a supermarket, right? Now, do you know the, where these vegetables are coming from? So, for example, if you're buying, let's say, bananas from uh, a grocery store, you don't know how many hands this banana has changed, right? Uh, from the farm to uh, the moment it was harvested till you bought it. You don't know what processes it went through uh you know how many entities it changed you know did it go through some uh some uh, you know like what kind of fertilizers or pesticides were you some were, were chemicals used during the process uh, of you know the harvest and so on so what if you can put this entire system on blockchain the entire supply chain of let's say some fruit on the blockchain which uh <clears throat> All the transactions in the from the start till the end of the life cycle will be will be recorded. Right? So from the moment the farmer sows the seeds in the ground till you know, and then when if he sells it to some other, if, you know, once he gets the harvest, he sells it to some other party, and then some other party sells it to the supermarket. All of these transactions will be recorded on the blockchain. <clears throat> uh, so this is one example. Other and uh, now my this example might seem a little bit uh, frivolous, but to think about it in terms of uh, you know uh, diamonds, for example, <clears throat> it's very difficult. One of the example, one of the use cases of blockchain is to identify take the blood diamonds from uh, the genuinely acquired diamonds. Right, so because the entire life cycle for diamond is mapped out on a blockchain, so 
This is how block, a blockchain can be used. <clears throat> Supply chain, trade, business, banking. Right, so yeah, these are all the different kind of examples of how blockchain can be used. If you want to, uh, my colleague can share the link to the Explorer course that we have. And in that course, we have three use cases, three video use cases on blockchain that you can go through, Ahmed. And uh, hopefully these will, you know, help you give a better understanding of <clears throat> how blockchain is being used. We have a question from Fahmi. How, how much knowledge in programming should I have to begin in blockchain career? <coughs> Well, you do, if you are a blockchain developer, if you want to be, if you want, if you want to be someone who's developing blockchain, who's going to be writing the code behind how the applications function, then yes, you need some programming experience. And uh, <clears throat> there are various technologies that, that, uh, that can be used to code the blockchain applications. So blockchain applications can be written uh, you know some 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 of these applications use GoLang. It's one of the languages that is used. Uh, JavaScript is again it's a very helpful tool. So uh, you need uh, before you can if you want to be a blockchain developer, yes, you do need a background about coding. You need to have a general idea of what. Not <clears throat> I won't say of you know you need to be the best programmer, but you need to have an idea of programming and coding and how it uh, and how to code basically and we have an explorer course <clears throat> on the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform that you can go through and it will give you a good idea of uh, of what programming is what coding is if you don't have an idea and uh, once you are familiar with uh, programming and coding then you can go on to learn the different technologies which can be used to develop a blockchain application and you can start all right. How can uh, based on the use case, how is the seller and buyer's identity validated and verified? So this is a good question and uh, goes in line with the previous question that I got. So in this example, right, there is we are using the email as an identifier, which is not the best identifier. This, which is not the best tool for identification, obviously, right? If you if we were to apply this application on a larger scale, on a more practical scale, we'll be using a, a government registered ID such as a passport or a national identification number, something like that, in order to in order for people to register on the blockchain network. And once you have been registered on the blockchain network, then your details cannot be manipulated. So, my, for example, if I, as Hashim, have been authorized to take part and uh, to participate in a blockchain network to conduct transactions on the blockchain network, then my identity cannot be changed. I cannot change my identity, and no one else can use my identity. Little, my identity would be unique to me, and I would be the only one <coughs> who would be able to use it. <coughs> uh, is the Q and A means that the session is over? Um, yeah, to be R towards the end of the session, and uh, but if you want, you can go over the recording that my colleague shared. Isn't okay. We have another question from Ahmed. Isn't a huge traffic generated by updating all the entities in the chain, and how can we overcome this? Well, um, I'm not sure what exactly you mean by a uh, huge number of traffic generated. Uh, if if you're if by traffic you are referring to all the number of different transactions that yes they will all be they will all be recorded on the blockchain network and uh, and that's and that's actually one of the advantages of a blockchain is that all the transactions are 
in the network are recorded and uh, you know there is it provides it provides uh, an entire audit trail so I mean, it's one of the advantages i would say that we have the entire list of transactions <coughs> to what extent blockchain is applied in Middle East and North Africa? Can you give an example on which fields it has been applied? And uh, I am aware of I am aware of one of the use cases of blockchain that uh, blockchain is being used to identify <clears throat> between counterfeit diamonds and blood diamonds, and uh, this is a problem that is I won't say it's specific to Africa, but it's but it's very common in Africa. In the Africa region, so you can uh, you can look you can look that up, and uh, <coughs> in my in in the Explorer course in the Explorer blockchain course on the IBM Digital Nation Africa platform on our platform, you'll be able to you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to go through this use case as well. All right. Are there any other questions? <laughs> yeah, we have a question from Boris. Uh, blockchain, how can blockchain help us prevent against a cyber attack? Honestly, I'm not very, I'm not aware if blockchain can be used in cyber security. Um, uh, it's just something that I guess you can look it up. I'm not aware of any specific use cases where blockchain is being used in for cybersecurity. So, are there any other questions? Okay, if there are no other any any other questions, then I will pass the mic on to my colleague Herman. All right, Gurman, it's all yours. All, all right, everyone. So this was an uh, excellent presentation from uh, Hashem Noor. Um, I will be sharing with you a, <coughs> in the chat some uh, links. In particular, uh, again, I'm going to share with you the link to Digital Nation Africa. Digital Nation Africa, uh, Digital Nation Africa .com, where you can access the uh, courses on uh, blockchain as well as other emerging technologies such as IoT, cloud, AI, and etc. Uh, you can also uh, join our Facebook uh, group with the link which uh, you can see uh, on this uh, slide. You can. Uh, uh, look it up on Facebook. And finally, uh, we would really appreciate if you fill out this uh, survey for us about the to, about the today's uh, webinar. I'm going to share the link with you uh, right now. And uh, as we discussed before, uh, all the uh, previous uh, recordings can be uh, accessed, uh, the recordings of the previous webinars, and the recording of this webinar, as well as the presentation, will be posted shortly in the link that I'm sending in the main chat. And uh, again, please uh, fill out the survey. We will really appreciate it. All right. Okay. So thank you. The, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, reach Hashim on this email that I'm typing in the chat or the one that you can see on the screen. Thank you and have a nice day.